you know, it sounds tremendous, you know, because most sports fans usually follow basketball, hockey stuff. They don't have such a long season football, for example. But 50 games in baseball is like a pebble in the ocean, man. That's not even really that long in their yeah. season, like a third of the season. A third of the season, exactly. But it's, it's, a little, it's, a, it's a little less than a third. It's 162 games. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so 50 games out of that. And early on in the season, too, you know, um, it's it's not that big of a deal. Like I said before, it's not that big of a deal early on in the season to miss 50 games. I mean, maybe for him financially and maybe for him physically because he can't practice with the team and things of that nature either right now. But, you know, early on for the rest of the team, 50 games early on in the season for him to not be here is, is not that big of an issue. Now, if it was at the end of the season, Prior to prior to the playoffs, that's the that's the major deal right there. But right now, you know, right now what this does for you know for for the Dodgers is it gives them gives them the ability and it gives them the uh, the personal knowledge and the strength to say, well, listen, even without Manny being here, I mean, you know, for 50 games, we're still winning these games. What if he's what if he comes back and he goes down with an injury? You know what I mean? And he's out for the rest of the season then. You yeah, know, the Dodgers already know how to win games without them. So and that's you know, early. You know what I mean? Early on in the season, that that gives that gives the Dodgers that that advantage. You know, and that definitely is. But that brings up my next point. Do you think it actually may in disguise? It's never good to lose your best player, arguably your best player on your team. But do you think that's uh, could be a positive that they lost him early? Because they like like you just said, they're learning how to win without him. And then when he comes back, it's just a plus. It's like icing on the cake now. Like, we've yeah. learned how to still be an above 500 ball club, leading the majors still. And then you come back and, and you give them that home runs in, in, that, in that fielding. Do you think that could be a positive that they lose them for 50 games at the, at the beginning of the season? Oh, yeah. You have, to take, you have to take a negative situation and you have to find a positive spin. And the Dodgers are doing that right now. We're still winning these games. You know, we're, we're, we're still winning these games. And, you know, and, and knowing that, all right, well, when he does come back, you know, we can win with or without, you know, Manny Ramirez. You know what I mean? I mean, there was no guarantee he was coming back this season to play in L.A. anyway. Right. You know? And it was just a plus for them that he did come back. But it's even, it's even a bigger plus for the Dodgers right now, knowing that they can win without Manny Ramirez. You know, so even if he does move on next season, even if he does move on next season, the Dodgers know how to win without him anyway. Right, and hey, there's nothing wrong with your team learning how to how to be self sufficient, man. Exactly. I mean, exactly. You know, and and he doesn't. He's not going to make or break your team. I mean, he came in last season, and I mean, he was. I mean, he he was he was he was killing jokers last season when he came. You know, when he finally was a 50 games left or something in the season. You know, uh, in the year, something, something along those natures when he goes to to the Dodgers, and the Dodgers, you know. Went on a great winning streak. I mean, he was. I mean, I think Manny Ramirez was batting like three forty, three fifty or something at that time. You know, fifty three games. I think he played with them last year, and he was batting like three fifty or something. You know, I mean, he. That, I mean, he brings that to your table. You know what I mean? So if you get that when he comes back off of his fifty game suspension, like you said before, that's just a big boost. You know, for the Dodgers. But if he doesn't come back, but if he doesn't come back, and he and he doesn't, you know, perform the way. You know, um, they want him to perform. The guys just know how to perform anyway without him. So, you know, it's you got to take the positive spin on the negative situation. That's that's how I'm looking at it. With that being said, once again, if you just tuned in, you listening to WKUF FM 94.3. It's your boy Diz Dominion, chilling with my man Supreme, calling in from New Jersey with the sports statistics and analysis. This is Go Dominion Sports Show, and it is currently 59 degrees, still in Flint. According to the barometer downtown, we got it going on, man. We're doing our thing. 94.3's got it locked down. You definitely got to keep it locked to this station because the other guys out here playing that old junk, man. I checked them out yesterday. They playing that old music, man. Supreme. Oh, yeah. They playing that 92, 93 over there, man. I don't know what's going on. They really need to tighten it up and stay with the times, baby. Get with the times, you know what I'm talking about. But we over here chilling out, man. And, uh... You know, I'm kind of glad you touched on my man T.O. a little bit. I see you, T.O., man. Do it for me, baby. But uh, that brings up something else I read this morning. Uh, the NFL <clears throat> has agreed to allow Chad Johnson to wear Ocho Cinco on his jersey this season. But the problem with it being, because he changed his name legally to Ocho Cinco last, last, like, beginning of last season, preseason this, right? Yeah, he did. It was beginning. What happened is the NFL at that time did not allow him to change his name because they had just made all of this Chad Johnson merchandise that still bared his old name. 
And they told him that if he wanted to change it to Ocho Cinco last season, that he needed to pay them for the merchandise that they had already produced. Thus, Chad Johnson decided to play another season under the name Chad Johnson. Now that that merchandise situation has been squared away, they are letting him play under the name Ocho Cinco. But Chad Johnson, when he filed his change of name papers, forgot to put the space between Ocho and Cinco. So it is not a two-word nickname. Now his name is Chad Ocho Cinco. Uh, hilarious. That is hilarious. Do you have any, any thoughts on that at all, man? Oh, I have a couple of thoughts on that. Why don't his cousin, you don't hear his cousin, Keyshawn Johnson, say on, uh, on, on NFL Primetime with Chris Bergman, come on, man. Yes. You know, how did he just, I mean, you want to change your name legally to Ojo Cinco. I mean, you got to either put a space or a hyphen in between that. I mean, look, man. Play with the name you were given. Your name is Chad Johnson. You're not, I mean, you're, you're, you're a good receiver, a decent receiver, but you're not a superstar receiver. I'm sorry, you're not Chad Johnson uh, or Ocho Cinco or Ocho Cinco, whatever you want to call yourself. You're not a superstar receiver, you know, and, and, you know, and you seem to forget that in the NFL, it's a team game, it's a team sport, you know what I mean? And, and you really have no reason to decide you want to change the name to Ocho Cinco in the first place. It already says it on the back of your jersey anyway, 85. So what do you need to change your name to Ocho Cinco for in the first place? So I'm glad he messed up. I'm glad it's going to look retarded on the back of his jersey. And I'm glad that the uh, announcers are going to call him Ocho Cinco. Because <laughs> that that will make him pay for every time they say it. And what would be worse, I mean, he's still hanging on to the Bengals by a thread, man. It, oh, man. So by, by, by a broken thread at that. And what happens if he gets traded from the Bengals and his number is not 85 when he turns up wherever he goes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's still going to be Ocho Cinco wearing like number, like wearing like uh, uh, number 15 or something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just... I mean, look. I mean, I understand you're trying to put the flash into the game. I respect all that. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at you for that, um, Chad Ocho, Ocho Cinco Johnson. I'm not mad at you for that. But come on, man, you need to play the game still, and you haven't really been playing the game the way you know how to play this game. I mean, when you, when you, when you first, when you first were playing for Cincinnati, he was living in basically he was living in the stadium um, for a while because he really didn't have a place. I mean, he had a place to stay, but he wanted, you know. He, he was trying to focus on the game and get his skills up. You know what I mean? I, I remember this. I remember this. He was living like in the um, in like the uh, um, uh, you know where the meetings and where, where the coaches and the players have the meetings and things of that nature. He was sleeping there at nights because he was getting up early and studying the books and doing things like that. I mean, that's when he was Chad does. You know, now he wants to be Ocho Cinco. He, he forgot how to play the game. He's just trying to be. Uh, he's still trying to be a superstar, living on what he did three, four years ago. You know what I mean? And, so you know, you're saying Chad and, Johnson is. Evolved into Ocho Cinco. Chad Johnson was the guy with the fade who used to go to practice every day and sleep at the stadium. And Ocho Cinco's the guy with the black and orange uh, fro hawk, looking like a, a, a black and yellow, a black and orange zebra running around <laughs> with the clown nose on and the big shoes and all that. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I mean, Clint Porter does it the best when he has his little, uh, when, he, when he has his little, um, when he talks to the media, you know, he's either, he, I mean, he, he has so many different characters, and I'm cool with that, man. I like the laughter and, it, and, 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 and the fun on that fun of the sport, you know what I mean? But, I mean, when you're on the field, I mean, you're, you're out there to have fun. I respect that. But when you're on the field, man, you need to play your fundamentals first. And fundamentally, he's not playing good football. So for him to change his name, to just make it a, a bigger a bigger stage for him to watch him um, blow himself up, that's the way I'm looking at it. You know what I mean? He's, he's building this big stage for him so he can fall off of it. I mean... Hey, do what you want to, Ocho Cinco. I mean, you know, when when you do get traded or when you get cut by the Cincinnati Bengals and your number does change, what are you going to do now? You going to go back and change the name again? He shouldn't did it in the first place. He really shouldn't. In the first place. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I